You know, Clint Eastwood cast his daughter in this film as the main victim, who you mostly see throughout the film, in photos of her corpse. I think that's how nepotism is properly done. You know what to do. Hello, everyone. I was able to see Juror number two, potentially Clint Eastwood's maybe final film, we don't know. Um, at the AFI Film Festival, where it premiered. It was interesting, for sure, being in the first bunch of people to ever see the film, because it's got its ups and its downs. So for those of you who don't know, Juror number 2 follows a juror for a high-profile murder trial who finds himself struggling with a serious moral dilemma that could influence the verdict and potentially convict or free the accused killer. And if you've seen the trailer, you pretty much know he's worried because he hit something driving home on a rainy dark night if he ended up maybe being the person who ended up killing this person in this trial so it's interesting it's an interesting premise and it stars nicholas holt as that juror it stars tony Clint as a prosecutor so the film starts off quite rough honestly and it's the film in general but especially like the first third has some really bad like sluggish pacing like i was really struggling in that first third and i was upset um because that's when the courtroom scenes take place and i was like there's gonna be some I love me some courtroom drama, I love me some courtroom scenes, some like yelling, counter arguments, and like fighting between the two lawyers, and the courtroom scenes were just so bland and boring in this. There was absolutely nothing going on, and the arguments were like surprisingly bad. Like Chris Messina, who's actually quite good in this, would like do his talking points, and then I was like, mm, but Tony Clutt's gonna come up in here and she's gonna like prove you all wrong, and she's just like asks him a few questions, and then he, and then she's like, hmm. I think you guys should think he's guilty. Like, literally, before they go off and deliberate, I don't know if this is even allowed. I haven't seen this in a movie before. Tony Clett ends her uh, final, uh, like, closing argument by saying, and you should find him guilty. And then it cuts to Chris Vecina, who also ends his closing argument, like, and you should find him not guilty. And I'm like, this is the extent of your arguments? Like, this is what you're saying? You're just like, well, I think you should choose me please so the courtroom scenes disappointed me but thankfully that was a short section that's like that's done by the first what like when the first act is over and then it really gets going once the jury is in the room together and they begin to deliberate and discuss it's no 12 angry men of course it's not even close but it definitely gets more interesting it, it, the first half was rough and it's definitely like okay it's picking up here. That's when you really begin to see Nicholas Holt's character his dilemma begin you can see him trying to decide what he wants to do here. You can see it in his eyes. He has like, Nicholas Holt has like piercingly blue eyes. I, this is maybe the first time I noticed it on him in this film, but like, like cause, cause he's, he's in sort of a reserved performance. You see a lot of the dilemma in his eyes, but like, wow, he's got really blue eyes. It reminded me of like when I saw the Bond films and Daniel Craig's eyes were just like, is that possible? I feel like you're enhancing that in post. So yeah, he begins as the only person who doesn't immediately consider the boyfriend guilty. Everyone else is just like, guilty let's go home back to our back to our lives everyone th throughout this film is just like guys i want to go home like i've got kids like i've got stuff i need to do it just really makes you question like is this really like if people just want to go home and they're just like whatever i'll just agree with everyone else we can get this over with it's like hmm a lot of this film is questioning our um justice system and whether or not it actually works and um what what true justice is um and i i think this pokes maybe a few holes in the whole jury thing, but I don't have any alternative ideas. The jury deliberation scenes themselves aren't really that intense or like thrilling or anything. Honestly, I think they're funny more than anything else. And there's a, a lot of good humor in this. There's also some humor that isn't good. And there's some dialogue that's not good, but there's like, there's some really funny characters and lines in this because they, they've assembled quite a group of characters in this, uh, this jury for sure. And I'd say the comedic standouts are, my favorite character in this, and maybe this entire film, I just loved her. The old lady played by Rebecca Kuhn is just so, so funny in this. And the second funniest character is a young stoner who's like kind of her buddy, honestly, because they sit next to each other, Um, played by Drew Shine. They, they've got a little dynamic going on. Like she tells, he says, oh, I'm so tired at one point. And she's like, no, honey, you are so stoned. It's not a good dialogue, but she made it work somehow. I'm not going to spoil anything, but there's a scene. They, t they take a little field trip to a bar. And she's just speed walking around the entire place. And I'm like, oh my God, I love her. The more actually like, because there are intense scenes in this film, the more intense scenes come outside of the jury, whether it's like 
a revelation of some car related documents. I won't spoil anything or like an empty chair on the day that the suspect is being declared either guilty or not guilty or like a Tony Collette, like, like I'll just say Tony Collette looking at something on her phone and then looking back and you'll know what I mean when you see the film. Um, so there's some intense moments throughout the film where I'm like, what is going to happen here? And this film does keep you, I'll give it this, because the screenplay is not great, but I will give it this. In most movies, when a judge is about to declare a suspect either guilty or not guilty, I usually find it pretty predictable and easy to guess which one it will be, and it's like, okay, it'll be this, and it ends up being that. But during, there's, as they do in any of those scenes, when there's like a long pause before the judge says whether they're guilty or not guilty and gives the verdict, during that long pause, I was like, going back and forth in my mind, I'm like, well, I can see being guilty and that would make sense and then this would probably happen story-wise, but then I could also see being not guilty because that would also be interesting. So I was actually like completely unsure of what they were going to say. So that was that was good that worked the film is handling the effectiveness of our country's justice system and like what is truly considered justice and especially in a situation like this like what what would justice be in this kind of situation and there are conversations had about that that especially towards the end that i found to be one of the more interesting scenes but i think given the fact that it's a clint eastwood film i think you can probably guess where it will end and ending off this little positive section i don't even know how positive it has been but with the performances you know there's there are some good ones in this i will say that there are some quite bad performances honestly i'm not gonna like directly name them since there's there's like more small roles on the jury and some line deliveries that are just like whoa how did you allow that to happen i know clint eastwood is known for like just one take and then we'll move on and then he gets like done before lunch or whatever but there's some line deliveries where i'm like but you gotta know seeing that on the day that like that is just not it. Nicholas Holt makes for a great lead here. Like I said before, you can really see the conflict in his piercing blue eyes. Um, it's a more reserved performance, but he does have some quite emotional scenes. Like, like there's a scene where he's talking with Zoe Goich, his wife, which I'll talk about in a second. Um, and she's just asking him a bunch of questions and he's just like standing there like, and tears are forming. It's like, dang, you're a good actor. He, he makes for a great lead here. Everyone here is giving some terrible dialogue to say. Like, honestly, humans do not speak like that. One of the most difficult things for an actor to do is somehow make terrible dialogue sound human. And I would say Holt maybe comes off the best in those regards and making all of those lines, like being able to still deliver them and somehow make them still believable. He does very good. And so does Zoe Deutsch, who um, also has given quite some bad dialogue ever is, and she somehow makes it seem natural. Um, And she has a small role. She's pretty much just like his wife character. But I, she was still somehow a highlight of the film for me, just every scene that she is in. She's just very good. Like, I was just like, wow, this is very, especially compared to some of the other performances, natural and maybe a little more grounding. And she's just a very, she's a breath of fresh air. Tony Clett is also very good. One of the highlights. Like I said, I was kind of disappointed in the courtroom scenes because I kind of wanted to see her go off and like do some lawyer stuff. And there are so many great lawyer performances in film. And I want to see Tony Clett do that. She doesn't really do that. She's they're kind of boring and she just kind of talks. But as the film goes on, she begins to have her own little arc and journey of questioning whether or not the person she's prosecuting is actually guilty. And she does great with that little arc that she goes on. I um, mean, she's great. She's great in the film. She's Tony Collette. She's incapable of giving a bad performance. And then the final performance shout out I'll give is to J.K. Simmons, who has a small role, but makes a big impact for his short runtime. He just pops in here. It's like, J.K. Simmons, you're a great actor. I love you. And then he pops out. I feel like I've kind of touched on my main negatives throughout, like the dialogue. There's not much I can say but besides it's terrible and that's not how humans speak and I feel bad for the actors who had to deliver it. Photography is uh, quite unappealing and bland and just boring to look at which when especially in that first like third it's just like so sluggish and the dialogue is bad and it's ugly to look at it's just like ooh, this is rough at first. And a lot of the movie in general bland is a word I would use it's kind of a, maybe the operative word for this where it's like Blah, a little boring but you know there are moments where it's like okay you're really cooking here like i said the editing and the pacing is rough it can feel quite sluggish and boring at times i feel like given this kind of premise it really shouldn't be this boring and sluggish at times i feel like it should like be hidden us the premise is just so good though and there are many moments where you're worried he might be found out and you find yourself throughout the film questioning like what should he do like i'm kind of rooting for you and i'm kind of like bro just shut up like Keep it quiet, like, please, for your own sake, you've got a child on the way. Just shut up, say he's guilty, and go home to your family. But then you're also like, but then that guy might go to jail for doing something he may have potentially 
not done and that you did do. It's like, ooh, mm, I know me personally. I would just be like, he was like this movie would have ended at like what would it be like the 30 minute mark when um everyone else is like oh he's guilty and i would be like i agree movie over and i get to go home um but you know that's because i'm a terrible person even though there are some, like a, some negatives like i said a good bunch of them i just say the premise is so interesting and like good enough that i was interested enough throughout most of it even though it's rough at times pacing wise and the performances the lead performances are good and it's like it makes for a fun watch. I'm, I'm sure this is like the quintessential dad movie. I'm sure your dad will love it. It's like a solid like three three star film, like a six out of 10. Awards, it's, it's not good enough. And Warner Brothers is absolutely murdering the film. They're giving it what, like it's I think like releasing in 50 theaters nationwide. So they clearly aren't going to be pushing for it or believing in it. Like the only potential nominations this could get is Holt or Colette. She really doesn't have any big scenes. Like the performance is good, but it's not very showy. Um, it's it's more subdued, as are pretty much all the performances in here. None of them are super showy. I know lots of people are kind of, including me, thinking like maybe if it's showy enough, it could kind of be like a surprise nom like Kathy Bates. But Kathy Bates and, Rich, and Richard Jewell, um, but her, Bates and Richard Jewell, first off, she's an Academy Award winner, so she's beloved within the Academy. And she also had these big emotional scenes in that film that Colette simply does not have here. Um, so, unfortunately, I think Tony Clett will remain with one Oscar nomination. We will get her that second one and win someday, but it will not be for this. And that fifth spot in Best Actor is just simply crazy. I had holes in there. He's good, but like I said, he's reserved. He has some crying moments, but it's like, mm, I don't know. Awards-wise, nada. Good old goose egg. And if you will see this film in one of the 50 theaters it will be releasing in, um, if you're excited, all that fun stuff, like the video, subscribe, and what would you do in this kind of situation? I'm letting that dude take the fall, I'm sorry. And see you in the next one.